It's amazing. I think we're all in shock a little bit. Uh, <laughs> incredible feeling. Uh, we're going to the Rose Bowl. Uh, we talked about this for four years and now it just happened. Well, when I stepped off the plane, you know, I just stepped back and just took it all in and took a deep breath. And, you know, that's something we worked hard for. You know, I've never been to California, and so this is an opportunity of a lifetime for me. Greetings from sunny Southern California, and welcome to a special pre-Rose Bowl edition of the Gary Barnett Show, featuring the head football coach of the Rose Bowl-bound Northwestern Wildcats. I'm Dave Ennett. Happy holidays, everybody. Coach, the last time we were together, you said the next time we did a show, it would be beneath a palm tree, and you kept your word. <laughs> the, the players kept their word, Dave, and uh, uh, things worked out for us. And uh, you know, we, we, I can't tell you how excited we are to be here. And we're getting ready to do our first practice in uh, California. And uh, the guys were early for their meetings and early for breakfast. And uh, we, we really have a great attitude for this game. As the uh, charter approached Los Angeles on Sunday night, you could tell there was a real sense of anticipation. And, and you said yourself, it kind of sunk in just as uh, we began our final approach. I think it did about uh, we, when the uh, pilot said we had an hour to land. And they're just, uh, for the first time, I saw our guys get a little giddy. And uh, with reason, and I was giddy as well, but uh, to think that um, so many people uh, do not get this opportunity that, that play this game and, and uh, play at this level, and, and here we are, uh, we've put ourselves in a position to come out and represent the Big Ten and, and do it in such a great traditional bowl and, and football atmosphere, it's, uh, it's almost overwhelming. Gary, any feeling as you got off the plane and you were handed the bouquet of roses that uh, here you'd watched the coaches you competed against going through the same ritual every uh, December and now here you were and it was your team arriving in Los Angeles for the Rose Bowl? I don't know that I, I felt uh, so much that way, Dave. I, th I, I think at that time um, I felt like I just wanted to get our team to the hotel and, and want to get it all underway. Uh, sometimes you feel like you have to go through those sort of ceremonies and, <laughs> and uh, maybe I should have had a greater sense uh, of awareness as to what it meant but uh, I've tried to create an atmosphere this week for our players that we're going to win this game by what we do this week and that's why we've tried to go two a days and that's why we've uh, tried to keep uh, as much of the media uh, away from our practices and and try to keep it as business-like as we could this week. And so I, I think that's what's really driving me more than anything else. Well, the Wildcats staked their claim for this trip to the Rose Bowl with their victory over Purdue and the regular season. But they still had to wait another week to see where they'd be going for the holidays. Terry Glenn, can you get it? Picked up. Woodson. This is fantastic. This is like a dream come true. I'm so proud of my teammates for doing this. This is, this is excellent. I wouldn't imagine it would be this exciting. Now that I'm part of it, it's just, it's just unbelievable. I'm overwhelmed right now. I mean, I mean, it's been great. I've always been proud to be a Wildcats, but I mean, this is this is by far been been the proudest moment I've had here at Northwestern. I think we're all in shock a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Incredible feeling. Uh, we're going to the Rose Bowl. Uh, we talked about this for four years, and now it just happened. I don't know what to say. Everyone's calling us a Cinderella team, but I don't think so. I think we're just a team that went out and worked hard and had a lot of fun and played together as a team. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a uh, we set a new echelon for everyone to start reaching for. You know, it shows that you can work hard and do everything right and not cheat and still be successful, and that's what we did this year. Going to the Midwest is the only thing that you ever think about. The football, Rose Bowl, you know, it's, uh, I don't, it's going to be like, you know, coming down Christmas Day, looking at all the presents, I'm going to be like, whoa. It's going to be unbelievable. I love roses. They're, they're a beautiful flower. They're the best. They're the best. Go Cats! Rose Bowl! Gary, I know there was a lot of excitement in the Nicolette Auditorium that day watching Michigan and Ohio State. What were your emotions? I think uh, I really thought Michigan uh, stood a great chance to win the game, and I just um, I just wanted them to play hard and, and uh, just keep going at Ohio State as the game unfolded, and, and I wanted to make sure that they didn't make any mistakes. And I was I just felt like I was pulling so much uh, because of our players. I knew how badly they wanted to to make this trip to Pasadena, and I just um, I was just trying to 
focus all my energy uh, towards mission in Michigan and uh, uh, you know it's been a year like that those, those sort of things have happened for us and and uh, rightfully so you know our kids went undefeated in this league and if that game would have uh, occurred three weeks earlier there wouldn't have been that kind of drama it w would have been a hands-down deal we were going to go to the Rose Bowl but it played out the way it did and, and I'm glad it did well, the players are certainly excited to be here in Southern California. We'll hear from some of them as we continue on the Gary Barnett Show from Los Angeles. Hey, you want to do that, though. It's just unbelievable. I'm just like you are, you know, right now, a fan, just watching, you know, the Cats do as well as they have this year. And um, I think it's a great thing for the program, and hopefully they'll continue in the years to come. Welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show. We're coming to you this week from the Marriott in Newport Beach, California. And uh, this is just a stone's throw from uh, University of California, Irvine, which I guess can be called Camp Kenosha West these days. <laughs> Camp Kenosha West, exactly right. We're gonna do two a days, uh, Dave. And they're not gonna be real um, strenuous, but we're gonna get a lot of good work for our young guys. And uh, we'll go helmets and shoulder pads in the morning, and then in the afternoon we'll go full go. and. Uh, get our game plan in and it get, this gives us a chance to uh, really uh, develop some of the uh, young guys in our program that we're going to rely on in the spring and next fall. It, it gives us 16 extra practices with them and uh, uh, I think that's where bowl teams really uh, create an advantage going into the next year is the kind of practices that they get for their young players. Well your players Gary certainly knew they were in California when the charter flight arrived on Sunday night. <laughs> It is overwhelming to us. We've never, I've never been here, and so for first time trip, it's very overwhelming. You know, already, even from the plane right over here, they're treating us like kings. So I think that uh, it's quite overwhelming, but we can't get caught up in it at the same time. This is great. You're right. Yeah, I, I wish I was. I don't know, but whoever it is, thank you. Appreciate it. For real. First, we were excited. We did. We couldn't believe it. You know, just acting crazy. And then uh, we got on the plane, and we were still acting crazy, then it got a little long. <laughs> Some of us went to sleep. Then we woke up, and everybody was like, you know, an hour to go, and everybody started getting antsy again, and then everybody was just bouncing off the walls as soon as they opened the door. Real close, get all our together. What is this guy, man? It's hard to take it all in right now, you know what I mean? Just getting by, you know, but it'll hit me. It'll definitely hit me. Probably sitting in the hotel and realize, oh my God, where am I? You know, this isn't Evanston. I look out the window, I just won't see any snow, so. I couldn't have uh, orchestrated a better thing than we're going to have this year. I, it's so neat to have somebody who hasn't been here for 47 years. Uh, they may not leave, but it's nice to get them there. Gary, how do you balance the opportunity for your players to have some fun here in Southern California and at the same time uh, get the work done that you need to do? Well, I, th I think uh, they've proven themselves all year that uh, uh, they're worthy of our trust and uh, they've handled everything with a great deal of maturity. And so what we've done is uh, not uh, curfewed the players this first week. We're going to let them enjoy, run around a little bit. But we do have early morning meetings and we've got two practices a day, so they have to be responsible enough to get themselves ready for the meetings and still handle the practices and uh, I have complete trust in these guys they're going to do a great job with all that. When we get to Pasadena we'll, we'll curfew them at that time. We have more activities that we have to attend and we need a little more control. Well we'll talk more about what's in store for the Wildcats and we'll take a look at Northwestern's last Rose Bowl team next on the Gary Barnett Show. be rumped all over. Uh, they were about twice as big in, in size as any of the fellows were back in those days. Gary, that's kind of an intriguing idea, a matchup of Northwestern's two Rose Bowl teams, but I know you've had a chance to visit with some of the members of that team over the years. I haven't. Uh, often, really. Um, that was a veteran group. They'd all come out of World War II and uh, Bob Voigt did a great job molding them into a team, and then they, you know, they were the best team. They they won at that time, and uh, you know those sort of things are relative. So many things have changed since then that uh, fortunately that matchup will never occur. Well, those Wildcats we do know are rooting with great interest for these Wildcats as the Rose Bowl approaches. Uh -huh. 
There's no doubt Alex Sarkeesian's proudest moment as a football player came when he helped lead Northwestern to a Rose Bowl championship over California in 1949. But now Sarkeesian and his former mates are nearly as proud of this year's edition of the Cats, with many of them planning to make the trip to Pasadena. Inside his house, dressed in the appropriate school colors, the phone has been ringing, well, wild. My teammates from Seattle, Washington to Florida and from Syracuse, New York to uh, California are calling and the first thing is, can you believe it? And Northwestern has won the Big Ten Championship. Yeah, well, they'll, do, they'll, they'll spend New Year's Eve the same damn way we did, okay? Just stay in there and don't get in trouble. <laughs> we, we've heard, heard from people uh, uh, in Europe about this. I mean, uh, friends that we have over there have, have called us and said, hey, this is great. Uh, uh, what's happening in Northwestern anyway? <laughs> is this, is this, uh, are these reports true? On the Wildcats' only other team to make it to a bowl game, there were seven players who played both offense and defense. The 1995 Wildcats are now starting to bring some overdue recognition to those gridiron warriors of days gone by. They resurrected the 1949 team. Uh, individuals, young men and women like you who were not involved in athletics could never believe that a Northwestern team went to, the, to any kind of a bowl after studying their record and all. I had a great leader in Sarkeesian. Uh, a football coach gets a guy like that to coach once in a lifetime. He's, uh, uh, he just, he just uh, explodes when he talks to you. The Rose Bowl may have never happened in 1949 if it weren't for a heroic Sarkeesian speech. Earlier in the season, the Cats fell behind Minnesota by 16 points, and then the captain set everybody straight. So he just stopped everything and he says, anybody in this huddle that doesn't think we're going to win this game, get the hell off of the field. And everything just turned around. Everybody came on. <laughs> and that was, a, it was a, a great thing. To me, that was no big thing. That's, that's what a captain is supposed to do, okay? But... We, uh, in the next 20 minutes, scored 19 points and went ahead 19-16. And when we went in at halftime, you know, we're sitting there fidgeting, waiting for the coach to come in there, and, uh, you know, and tell us about all the bad things we did in the first half. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. He walked in, took the brown beat-up hat that he used to wear, took it off his head and said, gentlemen, I always thought I had a football team. Now I know I've got a football team. Go out there. And that was it. Unbelievable. Gary, has Coach Voigt's offered any advice for you going into the Rose Bowl? Well, he took his team on a train out there, <laughs> and he told me I should fly. Well, that's pretty good <laughs> advice. But, but I guess there are probably some, some lessons to be learned from their experience of many years ago. I'm sure, uh, Dave, and I, I've talked to Coach Voigt's uh, about a number of things over the years, but uh, uh, again, so many things have changed, and he had a uh, all of his players are 26, 27 years old. They had families and those sort of things. And so uh, I got my groups considerably younger than that. Well, it's so neat that a lot of those guys are around and they're going to make the trip out here for this game. And it has been a, a terrific off season uh, in terms of awards for the Northwestern Wildcats. And we'll take a look at some of those coming up next on the Gary Barnett Show. We has done what people say was impossible, and we did it. We did it. You know, I, what else can you say? <laughs> That's where I found a new place to live, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't see that happen. It's nice to sit back and relax after a tough day of football, you know. 
it's good that, you know, it's a place like this where it, there's not too much happening right now. You know, there are not too many people here, so we can't get too distracted, so we can just actually just relax, you know, maybe bring a book to the pool and read a book. Right back there with us, man. Oh, they're trying to get a tan. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, God. That's my, uh, they're trying I'm to get a tan. Oh, God. Yellow, man. Go get some sun. Go get some sun. <laughs> These guys need a little sun, Chris. Yep, especially Drexler back there. Blending in with the wall. Blending in with the white wall. <laughs> These guys are turning into like California dudes now. Oh, they're all pretty boys. Yeah. Quarterbacks and DBs, you know. This is the life. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. I can't handle this. You know, I don't know what's gonna be like when, when Christmas rolls around. I don't have any snow. Can't throw snowballs at anybody. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna have to like pick up some mud. <laughs> Sling some mud at somebody. It's good to do this kind of stuff though to kind of get your mind off the football. Isn't it? it is. It is. And, and uh, it's the ultimate award. You know, it's the ultimate award. We're out here. We've, we've earned it. We've worked hard for it. And uh, we're going to live it up. And then obviously we're going to go out and play a great game. Over the past few weeks, the Northwestern Wildcats have received numerous awards from all over college football. Tailback Darnell Autry was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy, finishing fourth in the balloting. And recently in Orlando, a couple of Wildcats were honored with very prestigious awards. It's my pleasure to present the 1995 Home Depot College Coach of the Year to Northwestern's Gary Barnett. The irony of this award is the person who receives it, receives it because someone else did so well. And in my case, it was 95 wonderful young men who uh, made a commitment and pulled together. And then it was uh, a coaching staff of the most dedicated, the tremendous role models, and the great teachers that I've ever been around. And now the winner of this football club defensive player of the year and I'm happy to see that he is a linebacker I wish all three of you guys could win but this kid is from Northwestern Pat Fitzgerald I'd like to say it's a great honor an award that embodies everything that Chuck Bednarik stands for. I'd also like to thank my parents and loved ones for everything that they've done for me uh, throughout my career thus far. Uh, I'd like to thank five coaches that have uh, meant so much to me and have given me an opportunity to play college football. Uh, Larry Lokank, Tom Saliga, Greg Brandon, Ron Vanderlin, and, and Coach Barnett. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank my teammates, especially the defensive line, Matt Rice, Ray Roby, Keith Lazowski, Casey Daly, and uh, all our defensive unit, and I'd like to say thank you very much. And Gary, adding to that Coach of the Year award, you picked up the uh, Bear Bryant Award for Coach of the Year in Houston last week, and that's really one of the most prestigious awards. You know, it's sort of ironic, Dave, that they give those awards to a person uh, because someone else did a good job, not necessarily because they did. And so, you know, those awards, uh, those two awards that I've received is because of the nine tremendous teachers that serve as our assistant coaches and, and the, as you know, the great group of young men that we've had a chance to work with this year. And, and so really, all that should go to them. Well, I think you're being a bit too modest, but it's your show. <laughs> and we'll take a look at what's ahead for the Wildcats here in Southern California next on The Gary Barnett Show. Ready? They got so many weapons. Oh, they got Kishon Johnson. They got the t all their tailbacks are good. They got three pro prospects at tight end. They got enormous defensive linemen, good defensive backs, fast linebackers. You know, they're good. They're good. And welcome back to the Gary Barnett Show, coming to you from Newport Beach, California. And Gary, aside from preparing for the Rose Bowl, you're also in the height of the recruiting season. How difficult has it been to do that balancing act? That's. Uh... That's one of the tough things about uh, playing in a bowl. It, bowl uh, activities are great for the players and it's great for the fans, but for the coaches, it's double duty. 
Uh, we've had to travel all over as well as uh, find time to create a great game plan and practice schedules. And uh, even while we're here, while we're doing two a days in the evening, I'm going to be uh, going doing home visits in uh, Los Angeles area, San Diego area, and even in Seattle. So, uh, you know, it's it's just a lot of work, but it, it's worth it for all of us as coaches, and of course it's worth it as players. Well, with that in mind, how far along are you in terms of preparation specifically for USC? We pretty much have finished probably about two-thirds of the game plan, uh, Dave. We did that before we started practices last week, and uh, we took two days um, during recruiting and brought everybody off the road, and we just spent them on football. And uh, we got a lot of good work done there. And then uh, you know the coaches that have been off the road have put in extra time uh, getting us prepared and getting our plan down. So I, I feel pretty comfortable with where we are. Your initial thoughts on Southern California? Tremendously talented team. They uh, were ranked number one in the country uh, to start the season. We're picked by Sports Illustrated to win a national championship, and, and that you don't uh, you know that those rankings are pretty much based on the level of coaching that uh, is known to occur at that institution and the level of talent that has been recruited there. And so as you can tell, anybody picks you number one says, one, you've got the best coaching staff in the country, and two, you've got the best talent in the country. So that's what we're facing. And uh, those were well-founded uh, projections as well. They just ran into a couple of tough situations with UCLA and, and uh, Notre Dame uh, that, that they stumbled on. But uh, this is one talented football team and we've got our work cut out for us. Well, we'll talk more about USC uh, on our next pre-Rose Bowl edition and uh, what say next time we move say uh, over to Anaheim and set up camp in Disneyland. Okay, but Dave, we're going to get a little tan on those arms. Before yeah, we get... <laughs> well, we've got about a week to work on that. You too, Coach. <laughs> you can tell we're from Chicago. These pasty white arms and uh, those skinny white legs around here. Well, that'll change, hopefully. That'll do it for this pre-Rose Bowl edition of the Gary Barnett Show. Have a very happy holiday, everybody. And we'll see you next week from the Magic Kingdom. So 31-7 to the final. And, Coach, what stands out about the final stats? Well, your zipper's down. <laughs> So 31 to 7 the final score and coach <laughs> God. Uh, oh man Gary has coach Boyd offered any advice for you I didn't know we were rolling the <laughs> coach you had said that the team that won the turnover battle would win the game three interceptions by your defense and no turnovers by your offense Hell, there's nothing left for me to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Join us as we review game our blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Join us for the next Gary Barnett show. We're not sure where it'll be, one of the coasts, but Dave in it will be in a pair of Speedos.